Good evening. I'm Rab Steen, and here we are with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this is for Wednesday, the 29th of November, 2023. Please remember, you're coming to the end of a trading month tomorrow the end of the week on Friday, and you've had a heck of a rally in the stock indices, culminating one of the best Novembers on record. Very impressive. We talked about this, and I called it, I have to tell you, back in September, if you looked at my initial stock index report on the S&P, I gave what I thought September would be, October to down month, a big up month in November, got it. Strongest month of the year often. Then a pullback in early December, ending with a Santa Claus rally. So I've I've made the Hall of Fame. I've, I'm two out of three. <laughs> now will I be right in the month of December? We'll see. I could be a real all-star if, if the Santa Claus rally shows itself. So we'll see on that. I'm laughing because it did work out nicely. Um, but do expect some profit taking along the way. And there's a lot going on. Uh, you've got Saudi Arabia reaching out to Iran, offering to invest heavily in Iran if Iran will step back, stop promoting the Houthis, stop their problems that uh, obviously the Saudis are having with them through Yemen, stop this with Israel, uh, with Bahamas groups, stop the groups out in Lebanon, because they're basically the right arms of Iran. And Iran fund-wise, directs what's going on. We'll see, okay? It's the right step. Doesn't mean it will happen. And the Saudis, obviously, are after a two-state solution. You can see that. The writing's on the wall. Doesn't mean any of it will happen at all. Uh, today, the U.S. again sanctioned companies, 21 of them from different countries that are doing business with Iran. But this is so stupid. We sanction the countries and we go like this. Okay, Iran, you keep shipping your oil because that helps us for the Biden administration. Maybe we can keep gasoline prices down. I mean, it, I, I laugh at it, but that is what's going on. We have no energy policy. You know that. I pray to God you know that. We know that. The energy companies know it. What the energy companies have done is used American ingenuity. They figured out fracking to begin with, and now they figured out how to get more out of the same wells. Yeah, they'll deplete them faster, but that's the way that it goes. And I have to tell you, in the end, they have to go back and drill more wells. Why? Because America is not converting like the rest of the world is quick anywhere near it on electric vehicles. We buy our fair share, we build our fair share, but auto company upon auto company, other than Tesla, loses money on the electric vehicle. They make money on a hybrid, they make money on regular cars. So today you saw GM tell people nicely, hey guys, the strike's over. We have no money, we've got a plan because we've got so much more labor, so we'll only buy, listen to this, 10 billion shares back of GM. 10 billion. This is a, $31 stock. We still have a billion and a half after that left that we can apply. We've planned for all this. Uh, we're going to stop with the cruise control and pull back some big money from developing that. The time just isn't here for that. Not working out just yet. We'll pull back on electric vehicle manufacturing. We won't run at it at the pace we were. The same with batteries. So what the big boy is saying to you is, yes, but over time. And that's saying to, to all the, the boys here, there's more money. You know, did you see today, what was it, Elliot invested a billion into uh, Phillips 66? There's a reason, okay? There's plenty of money to be made here. Plenty of money to be made yet. This game's not over by a long shot. Now, Zoom, I started following it last Sunday and it has taken off, I was hoping it would, and it has. The market is now, as you can see, with the swing line pointing higher, but you're in a resistance area, a big one that you have to consider, maybe it's time you take money. You're at the 100-day, the 200-day average. When I put on the Bollinger Band, you're right with that too. So this is a first resistance zone, a very important one. And when you look at the slow stochastic, you're still overbought and not embedded. So that's what I think right there. As we come to Rivian, I told you I think you're in sideways action. And this is the first challenge of the upper band. Do you normally stay over the upper Bollinger Band? 
No, 95% of the time you trade within the bands, but it's from this exact sideways action. Folks, if I had to teach a classroom and show you this action, this is classic Bollinger Band, and from here a big move happens. It could be up, it could be down, but this will act as, as either a top or a base to move higher, okay? It's gonna be one of the two, very quickly, by the way. The market coming up here, and you're caught in that action right here in UGA. So if you don't understand Bollinger Bands, why not take advantage of what I've got? My Cyber Week sale is not over. It will end this weekend for you. You can click the link in the video up here. You can go to our website at irapstein.com, and under the word research by any new course, you will get new course, you will get one of these. If you're an existing member and have a course, you can't cancel the one you're in and buy a different one of same value. I'll call the uh, morning subscriber video to the ETF. They're about the same price. But you can step up, move to another higher priced one. Absolutely. So there's something for everybody. You get to choose from the different courses. You can give them away as a gift. Please don't start your original charting course if you choose that until I finish the new one. I'm hard at work on it every day and you'll get something brand new. So I decided to do that. All right, let's get over if I could now back to the charts. Um, in XLF, you have an embedded reading. The strongest reading on a chart that I know of, doesn't mean there aren't people much brighter than me, is this. If the reading closes under 79, I abandon my bullishness. But until then, it's still there. There's the potential to go higher. One of the numbers that I don't show you here are called window envelopes. And they're not your traditional ones that if you go on and you Google it or you try to put them on your chart the way that they're there. I completely changed them. And I find that they are powerful and they're, they're always a profit taking tool on the short side or the long side. So you want to know where that is. I show it in my subscribers in the morning, every morning. In XLI, by the way, you don't always have a profit to work with, you know that, but then the band doesn't matter. You're still embedded here, so I'm bullish. Now, you're about to get another bullish crossover here. So the market's either going to get what I call a kiss, where the 18-day average comes right up to the green and turns back down, or it gets over it. If it does, this is very bullish. Why? Because the 200-day average is down here. The green were over. That's the uh, 100. And that would put the 18 over it. Anybody I know that understands moving averages will say that's a classic bullish setup. So that's the first time that can develop. I don't remember the last time we had that. It would have to be, I guess, back here when the market got under prices and then it stayed under. They, they changed the whole sequencing. See how that works? When the 18 got right here under it, you changed everything. It's about to change back possibly. AMC, I've just been telling everybody in the mornings that I think that the $7 area could be an important zone. If the market loses the embedded reading, it will have been, and you could be back at 810 before you know what's going on. In RSPD, you're in massive resistance. You're at the 200, the 100 day, that's a lot. You do have the embedded reading, which is bullish as can be. So it's either enough to get through this up to the upper Bollinger Band, or this is enough to stop the market, which so far it's doing. And then the band starts turning down and you get into more of a correction and you can be back to 42 or thereabouts wherever the 18 day average is fairly fast. Uh, in XHB, you can see how good the market's looking, all right? It's still looking like it wants to move higher. How many embedded readings are we seeing? And they've carried the market higher. Now, we do keep getting good news. We had today the Fed Beige Book. It looked phenomenal, all right? In what manner? Things aren't as strong as they were. That's what traders want to see because it keeps the Fed at least into a pause mode. They meet the Fed December 12th and 13th. I don't see how they're going up in rates. There's no reason to so far. I haven't seen inflationary numbers. I'm seeing just the opposite where things are slipping slowly, but continuing to slip. <coughs> in the energy sector, why would you wanna guess what Saudi Arabia is able to accomplish tomorrow? Don't. All you can do is get in trouble. 
You don't know if they're going to be a meeting, all right? They, they canceled one, they can cancel another. We don't know if the things are going to sit as they are, if Saudi Arabia is going to cut, or if Saudi Arabia is going to get fed up and say, I'm not carrying this burden anymore for everybody. I'm increasing my production, and with that, you go down fairly hard. It can go any which way here. Got to be careful. Uh, right now, I don't think anybody knows. I have checked the news hour wires over and over, and nobody seems to have a handle on this. In the gold market, I was in uh, Aussie Biz TV today in Melbourne, and uh, I said it's the perfect storm for gold. Falling dollar, mildly falling inflation, not running to the downside in any manner. All right, where's the headwind? There is none. So it's an open sea. That's the way I put it. The market is running the upper Bollinger Band. It is could get an embedded reading here, which carries the market even further. Yes, it's overbought, you're waiting for the first buy, but it can, it can also be at a higher level if it embeds. Same in the silver market and copper. Metals have come alive. Low interest rates have a way of doing this. We saw tonight Japan's numbers, very strong. Their economy is picking up, and still the central bank says we need more proof so the yen doesn't take off yet. And Chinese numbers, we're getting them right now. I, I'll bet they're pretty good, I don't know, but I, I haven't seen them yet on the wire. But I'm doing these right now. Uh, TLT, I don't think you're gonna go much further than where you're at before you're, you run out of some momentum here. You've got your embedded reading, but you've hit your 100-day average in your Bollinger Band. So this came up beautifully. I mean, if you deny the fact that when you're over the 18-day average, you have a bullish bias and you're looking only for buy signals and the market's doing this with an embedded reading and you deny that, then you're blind. You need to get a Braille TV. I'm not being insulting to blind people. There's something wrong with you. It's staring you in the face what has been going on there. And we're embedded here. That's bearish as can be. You're under the 18-day average. You're at the first support zone, the 100-day average. If you give ground and bust through, I think if you bust through the lows of uh, Tuesday, probably getting down to wherever that Bollinger Band is. Right here, the market trying to see some profit taking. The flip-flop's true of FXE if you can take out that high, but you're embedded. So until you lose these embedded readings, I'm one thing, very friendly, these markets. So again, to take advantage of our offering, you can either hit the cursor, up, move it up to the top, you'll see an icon. Go to irapstein.com if you want. When you're there, just go into the research section, buy one of the any one-year subscriptions, away you go. I'm Ira. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Take care.